What's up guys, Justin here with TheSketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and Placemaker video for you. So in today's video, we're gonna check out the new features contained inside the newest version of Placemaker version three. So as many of you know, Placemaker is one of my favorite extensions for SketchUp because of the ease at which it allows you to bring in geographical context and also to create things like cities with a single click inside of your models. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you're looking for more information about about Placemaker, you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash placemaker. Do note that that is an affiliate link. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk a little bit about the newest version that they've just rolled out because it's got some really interesting features in here that I kind of wanted to highlight. So note that for any of these new features, um, there's a tab on the Mindsight Studios page labeled Learn to Use that you can use in order to learn how to use the different credits and other things like that. So if you're looking for more detail on anything in here, you can find that on the Learn to Use page. And so the first thing that's changed inside of Placemaker is they've adjusted the way that you pay for the program. And so previously, the, really the only way to use Placemaker was to pay for this subscription every year. So there was a yearly subscription model. Well, now what they've done is they've now added a new payment option in here as well, which is the pay as you go option. And so what that does is that allows you to download Placemaker for free. And then all of the data that you bring in um, is basically purchased by credits. So you can download the extension without having to pay for the yearly subscription and you can purchase credits. So like for example, if you wanna bring in like open street map buildings um, or different aerial data or stuff like that, um, if you wanna go through the pay as you go feature, you can do that and only buy credits for what you need. So that's one option. The other option is the subscription option. And so the subscription option, um, in my opinion, is definitely the better value if you can afford it in the sense that all of the 3D open street map data is free. Um, you don't get charged for any credits for doing that. And then you also get a fairly significant discount on the other data as well. So I believe this comes with a thousand credits. Um, in addition, um, all the other data is significantly discounted. And I believe this is $299 a year for the subscription. But if you do a whole bunch with the data, um, I think you're gonna find that's definitely gonna be worth it. And so if you scroll down, you can see some of the options here. You can see how on the subscription model, for example, bringing in this data is gonna have a significantly lower credit cost than if you do the pay as you go option. Um, so you can see how in general that's going to be the case no matter what but um, you can definitely now download this for free and then use credits in order to get the areas that you need. So that could definitely result in a cost savings for you if you've been looking at Placemaker and weren't able to justify the cost before. So now let's talk a little bit about the new features and what they've changed and what they've upgraded inside a Placemaker. So one of my favorite features in this version is the high quality terrain feature. And so if you remember when SketchUp made the jump to another data source for their terrain, what happened is you started really kind of losing the uh, higher resolution information inside of the terrain. So you'd get it in, but it wasn't very detailed. Well, Placemaker now offers the option for higher quality terrain from a different provider. And so what that means is that means you get much better terrain inside of SketchUp. So let's bring in some terrain inside of Placemaker. And so we'll pick a spot and let's go ahead and find somewhere somewhat hilly. So let's bring in this area in Castle Rock, Colorado. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this area in order to import it. And then we're gonna come in here and we're going to bring in some terrain. And so the way that we're gonna do that, and notice how you can adjust the grid spacing on this, and what that's gonna do is that's going to give you a higher or lower um, resolution grid on here, but we're going to select this area, we're gonna click on import terrain, and what that's gonna do is that's gonna tell us how many credits it's going to take in order to do this. So in this case, it's gonna tell us that to bring in the terrain for this whole area, which is a fairly large area, is going to be 20 credits. And so if we click on 20 credits, what that's gonna do is that's gonna import this terrain into SketchUp. 
So one thing to point out is this came in a little bit lower resolution um, because I set my grid spacing so high. So if you set your grid spacing lower, then uh, you can bring in more detailed terrain. So just for your knowledge, here's another import I did where I actually set that grid spacing to maximum just to kind of get an idea. You can see how this is much more detailed terrain data than what we had in there before. So you can use this CCM Ion um, terrain data in order to create really detailed stuff. I will say um, I wouldn't recommend bringing in a large amount of terrain data um, at the lowest grid spacing because your files get really big. Um, you can see how there's a lot of geometry in here. So over the same area, it was a significant file size change to bring this in over the whole area. So it's probably better to target specific areas in order to do this. So in addition, they've still got their map box data and their, uh, and their near map data in here. So you can also import that imagery in here as well. Remember the uh, map box data is the high resolution satellite imagery. The near map is the ultra high, high resolution imagery as well. So you usually only use the ultra high resolution for very small areas. Um, but then the map box allows you to still get higher resolution images in here um, than the stuff that you can get just by the default SketchUp import. So for example, let's say, um, let's say that we wanted to bring in maybe some, We'll call it high resolution imagery. So you can see how depending on the zoom, um, you're gonna use more or less credits. So if I was to do a high resolution on this area, you can see how this would cost me 30 credits. If I was to go to the max, this is gonna cost a lot more. It's gonna be 120 credits. So depending on the areas that you want, you might consider having some areas where you want like the max and then other areas where you would just have the high in here. But I could take this and I could bring in this high resolution um, imagery. So I could just import it, confirm the credit order, and then it'll come in here and it'll replace the existing data with that higher resolution data. So it's gonna come through here and you can see how it's downloading this and it kind of breaks everything up into a grid. Um, so you gotta give it a little bit of time to download the data and bring it in. But once it does that, you're gonna have much higher resolution images than you had in here before. So you can see how now if I zoom in, this is much higher resolution data. And uh, over this whole area, I think uh, I think this took about 30 credits um, on the subscription model. But again, you can kind of limit this too. If you didn't need this whole site or this whole area, you could do smaller areas in here as well. But then if I wanted to, I could also import the terrain and uh, these images would be applied to the terrain as well. So one cool feature that they've added is they've added the ability to enable larger areas. So a lot of the time what you want, right, is you don't want just whatever fits inside of this square that this gives you. So you need more data than that, especially if you're working with cities or large areas. So let's say we were to go up to Denver. So we'll go up. Let's do this area right here. And let's say you needed to bring in this whole kind of stretch or this whole kind of area right here. Well, previously you'd have to select one area and then go back and select another and you wouldn't really be able to tell where you started. Well, now you can check this box for enable large areas. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to bring in a larger area of data. So in this situation, for example, I could bring in this entire area um, just by selecting this. So I could select the area and you can see how this is a much larger area that I can import and it'll bring this whole thing in here. So you can select those larger areas. I believe also, um, yeah, so what it does is it leaves kind of a box here so you can see exactly where that area was that you brought in. So if you needed to bring in some more, what you could do is you could actually kind of see what you had already brought in and then you could kind of align like this so that you can be more precise with those areas that you're gonna bring in. So that visual indicator is really helpful. Then if I import this, you can see how now I have data for even more in here than I had before. So in addition, this still does have the ability to bring in the buildings and everything else um, with the OpenStreetMap data. So note that with the subscription version, this OpenStreetMap data is free, meaning you don't need credits in order to do this, but you can use this in order to bring in buildings, roads, other things like that, like you always have been able to. Note that they have added the ability not only to do roads, but also rails. And so you can see how I can use this in order to bring these buildings in super fast on these different tiles. And I can also, if I want to, and this will take a little bit longer, but you can use this in order to create your roads 
And so note that there's now an option in here to create extra 2D detail. So you can add curbs and road lines. So you can also use this to create some extra 3D detail in here. So if I import this in, just like this, this is gonna take a little while because it's gotta come in and generate all of that geometry, but that's actually gonna bring the roads in um, and you can use that in order to quickly create cities inside of SketchUp. And so you can see how now if I zoom in on this, this has created my roads and also my curb, curb lines. Then it's also created some lines with stripes in here as well. So um, that can be really helpful if you're creating like renderings of these uh, different buildings or other things like that too. So you can still bring all of that data in the same way that you could before, um, as well as you could bring in things like paths or also you can bring in trees for the different green areas. So you can see how this will bring in some tree proxies for green areas if they've been marked as green areas on OpenStreetMap. So you can see how this will bring in trees in areas that have been marked as green as well. So again, just adding all of this context is really easy to do inside of, um, inside of Placemaker. Um, one thing to note about bringing the buildings in is the Microsoft buildings still do cost credits. So for example, if I click on this area and then I click on import buildings, what it's going to do is it's going to pop up a little window um, giving, me, giving me information about how many credits this would be, but it also gives me a preview of what those Microsoft buildings would look like. So before you use any credits, you can see if it's actually going to help you um, by looking at the preview. So that is worth noting that the Microsoft buildings do take credits, but you can see what you're going to get before you do that to decide if it's going to be beneficial or not. So another option they're offering, which is a really cool option, is the ability to use Ecopia Smart Site in order to actually use a high resolution image in order to create survey quality line work inside of SketchUp. So basically what this does is Ecopia uses artificial intelligence in order to create surveys um, by using aerial images. So these surveys are super detailed and basically what they do is they generate all of this line work for houses and other things like that. You can use this to actually generate um, real survey data. So this works on a very large scale and uh, basically what it does is it is it comes with, it'll create a SketchUp file, a CAD file, and then this GeoJSON file as well. So obviously this is targeted more towards professionals. So this is something where you actually have to get a quote. There's actually a price in here. It looks like it's $379 per square kilometer. Um, you can also get rush orders done. I, I realize it's more of a high cost thing, but when you consider what it would cost to go out and do an actual survey and the speed at which you can get something like this done, it's definitely an interesting option for you to be able to get your data without having to do a whole bunch of in-person surveying. So if that's something you're interested in, uh, you can fill out this form to get a quote on the uh, Ecopia Smart Site um, data. So in addition, they do still have access to the um, near map 3D mesh cities. So the way this works is it's basically an order that you put in with the near map guys. What the near map guys do is they actually generate these 3D cities that are actually textured using scan data. And so um, you can use this in order to create more detailed cities than you can just with the uh, just with the uh, open street map data built in. So if that's something you're interested in, um, there is a coverage map right now. Um, I believe that it's mostly limited to USA and Canada. Canada at the moment um, and you can get a quote down below so you do get a discount from near map on what that would usually cost um, by using the placemaker extension so you can use this in order to get that 3d city data really quickly so that's where I'm going to end this video. One thing I do want to know, which I think is kind of cool, it doesn't really have a whole lot to do with SketchUp, is they're also coming out with an extension for Revit. So I know a lot of designers use Revit, and I think that this is going to be really popular there as well. So really excited to see these guys branching out and adding new features and also trying new things. And uh, I wish them all, all the success moving forward on that as well. I'd really love to see this go be successful in architecture circles in general. I think that would be good for all of us. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new payment options, the features. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.